Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's round out talking about links by first talking about images and then we're going to talk about how to add an image as a link. So images can be placed into our website by using the image element, but we're also going to be using this for a few different types of file formats. There's the .gif or GIF file, and this is best for animated images. We have a .jpg or JPEG file. This is best if we're using photographs. And the last one, a .png file. We use this when it's best suited for vector images or if we want transparency with our image. Now, although an image has a height and a width, and it's visually like a rectangle, an image is not a block level element. Since the image is self-closing, it can't contain other HTML elements or content. It's actually considered an inline element. Now for an image to work, we need a couple of key attributes. There's the source attribute, the alt attribute, and the title attribute. Let's start with the source attribute, because every image must contain a source attribute. And this is really the value that is the URL or the location of the image file. In this class, our images are always going to be stored in our images folder. An image will also contain an alternate or alt attribute. Every image needs to have this value because the alt attribute is going to provide a brief description of the image. So if the image fails to load, the value of this attribute will show up on the page. It's also worth noting that if a user is visually impaired or using a screen reader to read through websites, then the value of the alt attribute provides the necessary text for that screen reader to speak. Now the last attribute I'm gonna talk about real quick is called the title attribute. Now the title attribute is a global attribute, so that means we can use it on any element. And when it's used with an image, the title attribute's value will display the text as a description of the image whenever you hover your mouse over that image. The text that it displays can sometimes be called a tooltip. Sometimes you might also hear it as help text or hover text. But let's go ahead and try adding some images. We're going to start by downloading the file in Blackboard, and we're going to go straight to the goldenretriever.html file, and that's located in our breeds directory. Now I have this open on both the HTML page and in my preview pane, so you can see this as it gets built. We're first going to put an image element right after the main element. So let's start with the source attribute. Now we need to provide a relative path to the golden retriever file. And since we're currently located inside of our breeds directory, we need to get out of that directory in order to see what's out there to get access to the images folder or the images directory and the images that are inside of it. And if you remember, when we navigate up a directory tree, we need to put in that dot dot forward slash, kind of like taking a few running steps before jumping out of our directory. We're going to step, step, jump, or dot, dot, forward, slash. And that's going to take us out of the breeds directory. So I'll type in dot, dot, forward, slash. Now I have visible access to not only the breeds directory, but also the images directory. In order for us to open the images directory, though, I need to put in images and then that forward slash, which indicates I want to have access to all of the files that are inside of that images directory. So once I've done that, I can now see all of the images that are stored inside of that directory. That forward slash is equal to me being able to say, show me what's inside. Now in this case, we want the golden retriever file. And there's our golden retriever. So let's add the alt attribute also. Now the value here needs to be very descriptive to let us know what that image is, just in case the image couldn't load. Let's say, for example, we just put dog. Well, if I were to accidentally put in the wrong location or the wrong file name, let's say we made the common mistake of using .png instead of .jpg. Well, now you can see that I have a broken image link, and the only alt value that I can see is the word dog. Well, that's not very descriptive. It's enough to let me know that some sort of a dog should be here. But I really want to be descriptive when I put something in here. Maybe I want to put down a golden retriever puppy, or just a golden retriever. But either way, whatever value I have here, I want to make it helpful and descriptive for the end user who doesn't have access to the image to help support that value. So I'll replace dog with golden retriever. And at least now, 
I would understand that this image should have been a golden retriever. I'll go ahead and put back that .jpg. And now I'm going to add one more attribute. This is the title attribute. And remember, this is a global attribute. We could be using this on any element that's inside of our body. We also call this hover text, help text, or tool tip. I'm going to put something helpful in here like, again, golden retriever, so that when I hover over the image, the words golden retriever appears. And I'll test this by hovering over the image. And there you see the image displays the text Golden Retriever on top. Let's go ahead and add the images for the St. Bernard and for the Airedale Terrier. So I'll first start with Airedale Terrier. I'll go after the main element. I'll add the image. Again, the source location is going out of the breeds directory, so dot dot forward slash, into the images directory, forward slash to peek in, and then I'm going to select that Airedale Terrier dot JPEG. I do want to also have an alternative value, just in case. And I want a tooltip or a title attribute. We'll test this out by going over to the Airedale Terrier page. And there's our Airedale Terrier. And if I hover, there's my hover text. One more, let's go to the St. Bernard page. After the main element, I'll add my image and the source attribute, again, leaving the breeds directory, into the images directory, and selecting the JPEG for the St. Bernard, adding our alt text, and our title. And then testing to make sure that it works. What a cute puppy. So that's just the rundown of how to insert an image. But what if we wanted to make an image a link, just like an anchor element can turn text into a link, it can do the same thing for an image. So let's go back to the golden retriever page. And I'm also going to load that page into my preview. Now notice that I have this home page link at the top of my page. So we're going to replace that with an image that just says home. So the link is already taking us where we want to go. That's to the home page. That's the content that we would click on. Well, we're going to replace that content with an image. So I'll type in image. And here I'm going to select the source for my image. Again, leaving the breeds directory. Going into the images directory. Peeking in with that forward slash. There's my home button.png. I'll go ahead and select that. But just in case, I do want to have an alternate value. I'll save my changes and try it out. And just like that, I'm able to navigate between Golden Retriever and Home. Let's do that on the St. Bernard page and that Airedale Terrier page also. Starting with the Airedale Terrier, I'm replacing the home page text with an image. The source taking us out of the breeds directory into the images directory and selecting the home button with the alternate value letting us know that this is the home page button. Once more for the St. Bernard. And let's test all of those out. Starting with Airedale Terrier, there's our home button. Golden Retriever, our home button. St. Bernard, our home button. So just like that, we can actually use images as a link. And not just images can be links, we can link pretty much anything. We can turn paragraphs into links and other elements. But for right now, I just wanted to run through this one. Now if you have any questions on this material, please don't hesitate to ask.